Hello students, next we look into another important topic which is the analysis and characterization of LTI system using Laplace transform. What is the meaning of characterization of LTI system is, you can characterize the system to be either a causal system or you can say that it is a stable system, not or but and, okay. So, so you can say that it's a causal or non-causal system and it's a stable and non-stable or non-stable system. Similarly, a system with memory, without memory, uh, like that there are many other characterizations of a, uh, you know, a system which can be done using the Laplace transform of the uh, system that you have just now found. So let us start with the causality. We all know what is causal system. A system is said to be causal. We have seen that if h of t is equal to or if h of t exists, okay, or if h of t is equal to 0 for t less than 0, then the system is causal. then the system is causal. Now in Laplace transform there is a property, so I will write, remember the property, remember the Laplace property, remember the Laplace property, okay, now this property, what is that property? The property says, if h of t is right sided, and if the line of real part of S is equal to sigma naught S is in the ROC, then basically it will be a right-handed signal. That is what it means. So, so here when we say that a system has to be causal, for a system to be causal, this is the condition. That means we are saying that the system has to be right-handed, right-sided. Okay. So when we are saying this, we say that is that is the function the function h of t is right sided that means it exists only in the right half uh, right sided that means it would exist only for positive values of t then from this what we can say is i will write it as a statement the ROC associated with the system function <coughs> for a causal system is a right half plane. That means we are saying that if we are finding out h of t, if we know h of t and from that if we are trying to find out the Laplace transform of h of s, sorry Laplace transform of h of t which is h of s or if we just know only h of s by finding out y of s divided by x of s and this is what will happen in most case you don't know h of t but you know h of s and then to find out if the system is causal you will have to do the inverse laplace transform of finding h of t to sorry h of s to h of t but instead of doing that you can just look at this particular rule that means you can just plot the roc of h of s using the laplace transform uh, roc concept that we have studied and based on that, you can come to the conclusion <coughs> if a system is causal or not without looking into H of T. <coughs> so what does, what does it mean? It means that if H of S has an ROC which is in the right half plane of the, uh, you know, of the S plane, then the system is going to be a causal system. But we have to expand this a little bit more because here it means that you know if you are having only to the right hand side that means if you are having only to the case where you know suppose if this is the uh, suppose if this is the uh, S plane then uh, people might think that okay if only if it is like this it might be a, a you know a causal system no. Even like this, it will be a causal system. That means it should exist from here to the right side. 
so to for getting a more clarity on that you know we can write the statement we can further expand the statement as so you can see here the statement says for a system with rational system function not an irrational system function but a rational system function the causality of the system is equivalent to the ROC being the right half plane to the right half of the rightmost pole. I will explain this with the help of an example. Now consider a system H of T. Okay. Characterize the system uh, or I will say consider H of T is equal to this from H of S find if the system is causal or not if the system is causal or not so what we have to do is we have to find out the you know the Laplace transform of H of S but before that have a look at this function what how will you plot this function this plot function h of t can be plotted h of t can be plotted like e raised to the power minus t u of t that means it will exist only in positive time period correct so originally from the definition of a causal system that we have already learnt in the first modules and all first second module that if h of t is equal to 0 for t less than 0 then the system is causal so directly by looking at h of t we can say that the system is causal the only thing is that we have to you know find the same thing that means the system is causal by looking at this laplace value okay so i will write taking laplace taking laplace of h of t which is i will write h of t laplace transform hmm, will give me h of s so let me do that it is a simple case that e raised to power minus t u of t we already have seen the laplace transform of a decaying exponential function it will come as 1 divided by s plus a here a is 1 so i will write this and then I will write that the real portion of S should be greater than minus 1. Okay, the real portion of A should S should be greater than minus 1. This is the Laplace transform that we have already studied in the previous module. The Laplace transform of a decaying exponential signal. And we have also defined how to write the ROC of this. So if I plot the ROC, if I plot the ROC, the ROC will look something like this. So here I am having the sigma and j omega and uh, then if you remember we will plot the ROC like so this is minus 1 and then to the, the right of this I will plot the ROC to the right of this I will plot the ROC this is what this is how we basically plot the ROC this we have already seen in the second module okay so as you can see the you know the ROC basically satisfies the condition of causality how if you would look let me write this completely so here the real portion of S should be greater than minus 1 okay so if you look at the poles of this particular function the poles is going to be s plus 1 is equal to 0 or s is equal to minus 1 correct that is a pole so there is only one pole okay since there is only one pole what this says is that for a system with rational system function the causality of the system is equivalent to ROC being in the right half plane to the right of the rightmost pole. So which is the rightmost pole? There is only one pole which is S is equal to minus 1 and to the right of that we are having ROC. So I can write since ROC is right side to the rightmost to the right most pole the system is 
caused that. Okay, the system is causal. So, so without looking into H of t, I can directly find if the system is causal by looking at the ROC of H of s. That is what is basically the concept of, you know, the characterization of LTI system using Laplace transform. That means just using Laplace transform and without looking into the time, uh, you know, the time function, you can directly come to a conclusion if the system is causal or not. Next, we look at the stability of a system. Now, generally, we can look at the stability of a system by looking at the ROC, the region of convergence of the Laplace transform of the system. That means, if we have a system H of t, for H of t, we have a Laplace transform H of s with an ROC. Now looking at the region of convergence, we can decide the stability of the system. How? For understanding that, first we have to understand what is stability with respect to H of t. We, I will write it using a different color. H of t is stable when H of t is going to be stable when H of t is absolutely integrable. That means if you are going to take H of t with respect to time if you are going to integrate it from minus infinity to infinity and if that is coming out to be a finite value that means it is less than infinity then it is a stable system that is what we have studied. We have also studied, we have also studied that H of omega, the H of omega, when we try to calculate, it can be obtained only if H of t is following this absolutely integrable condition. So we say that H of omega will converge if h of t is absolutely integrable or I can I can say that or h of t is stable. Now what is h of omega? See if you remember I had said that if you calculate h of s that means if you calculate the Laplace transform of something of a function you can directly get h of omega from it by putting by putting in place of s in place of s if you are going to put s is equal to j omega that means you are going to consider s to have a imaginary value that is j omega then you can basically find out the Laplace transform. Thus, now combining these concepts, I can write an LTI system is stable if and only if the region of convergence, the ROC, the region of convergence of its system how do we get the region of convergence? We get it by taking the Laplace transform, H of S. Okay. So, LTA system will be stable if and only if the ROC of its system function, H of S, of its system function, H of S, includes the J omega axis. Includes the J omega axis that means what is j omega axis that means you are having the real value that means the real value of s is going to be equal to zero that means that when you have the real value of s is equal to zero generally we have s is equal to sigma plus j omega so if you have the real part to be equal to zero we get the j omega 
so if you are going to have any roc of a stable system the roc of a stable system whatever be the case it should include the j omega axis j omega axis means real part zero okay so that axis should be included whenever you have the roc so whenever you are having a system whose laplace transform you know that is h of s you know and from that if you are able to calculate the roc then looking at the roc you can conclude if the system is stable or not by just looking whether the j omega axis is getting in the roc or not let us consider an example an lti system with system function h of s is given here so if that is the case then what are the poles of the system the poles are at s is equal to minus 1 and s is equal to plus 2 correct and the zeros are at s is equal to from using the numerator s is equal to 1 okay now let me try to solve this to find out h of t okay so solving for h of t that is you have to take the inverse laplace that means the laplace inverse the laplace inverse of h of s you get h of t so how do we solve that you all you all know how to solve the laplace inverse basically we do the method that h of s is equal to s minus 1 divided by s plus 1 as well as s minus 2 from which i can split it up into a divided by s plus 1 plus b divided by s minus 2 i need to find out a and b suppose i have already solved this i have already solved this but i am not going to solve it again uh, just let us say that after solving i get let me write that after solving i get a is equal to 1 by 3 not 1 by 3 sorry 2 by 3 and b is equal to 1 by 3 you can you can put these values and you can see whether you will get this answer you will get this answer okay so if that is the case then therefore h of s is going to be equal to 2 by 3 divided by s plus 1 plus 1 by 3 divided by s minus 2 which i can write it as 2 by 3 1 divided by s plus 1 plus 1 by 3 1 divided by s minus 2 correct therefore i can find out h of t by taking the laplace inverse of h of s h of s which actually comes out to be or I can find it out by 2 by 3 the Laplace inverse of 1 by s minus 1 plus 1 by 3 Laplace inverse of 1 divided by s minus 2 I think this is s plus 1 okay now from here the answer can take different terms you might be asking why for understanding that you will have to look into laplace transform but i will try to explain it here itself you will understand it much more clearly when we look into laplace transform okay that is the social uh, the the solution will depend on roc let us see how for understanding that i will use a different color for explaining that let us try to find out the Laplace transform of x of t. So if I am trying to find out the Laplace transform of x of t which is equal to e raised to power minus a t 
u of t you can see that this function if you would draw it will be basically a function that looks something like this e raised to power minus a t u of t is something that looks like this correct where this is the t axis and this is the x of t signal so it does not exist for the right hand it does not exist for the left hand side it exists only for the right hand side equation or the right hand side of the time axis so i will write that this is a right hand side equation or rhs equation okay now if i am trying to find out the laplace transform of this and you know the equation of laplace transform is basically given by x of s is going to be equal to from 0 to infinity e raised to power minus a t u of t that is the signal x of t that multiplied with e raised to power minus s t dt if i am trying to solve that i will get x of s is equal to uh, 1 by s plus a 1 by s plus a with roc the region of convergence being sigma greater than minus a and if i am trying to plot this if i am trying to plot this the plot will look something like this so as you can see here the roc is drawn here as you can see it will exist from minus a towards infinity okay minus a towards infinity it will exist now if i am going to take a similar case but i am going to take a different signal now the different signal is going to look something like let me draw it here uh, first let me write it suppose if i am going to take x of t now i will use a different color let's let's take x of t is equal to minus e raised to power minus a t u of minus t now how will this equation look like say it is existing from u of minus t u of minus t means it is existing only in the negative axis of t correct another thing is that e raised to power minus a t i have to draw and how do i draw e raised to power minus a t i draw e raised to power minus a t like this correct i draw the e raised to power minus a t like this and if i am so this will be one and if i am going to take only the negative axis of that that means the signal will not be this but it will exist only from in minus infinity up to zero and then it will become zero okay this is how the signal will look like and plus if i am going to put a minus in front of it don't ask me why i'm going to put a minus but i will show you with the result if i'm going to put a minus this will come in the opposite direction so again i will have to redraw it so now i will redraw it with let me draw it with a different color so it will look something like this so this is a signal x of t is equal to minus e raised to power minus a t u of minus t so it will look something like this now you can say that this is a right handed signal okay you can say that this is a right handed no sorry left handed signal so this is a left handed signal or left handed sequence or left handed signal okay equation so the previous one the one that we see here was a right handed signal and here this is a left handed signal and a left handed signal basically is looking like this now if you look at the area under this curve actually the area under this curve will go to minus infinity minus infinity means actually in a way you will not be able to you know calculate many things in it because it is not absolutely integrable but let that remain here let us now find out what is x of s okay what is x of s x of s will be when you are trying to find out the laplace transform and here it is going to be since it is u of minus t it will exist from minus infinity to zero okay and the remaining is minus e raised to power minus a t u of t is one 
into e raised to power minus st dt okay from where you can combine both of this and since i am doing it for the first time i will do it for you completely minus because well, minus is common e raised to power then again i am going to take a minus as common and then s plus a into t dt this is your x of s that you want to calculate from which you know because this is a negative one i can take that negative and change the integration from 0 to infinity <coughs> and it becomes minus e raised to power the minus is now gone and s plus a t dt now this integral will converge only if uh, it will converge i will write here it will converge it will converge only if s plus a is negative value that means the real portion of s plus a turns out to be less than zero or i can say that the real portion of s turns out to be less than minus a okay turns out to be less than minus a if that is the case then this can be easily integrable and uh, when we integrate it i will get x of s is equal to minus of e raised to power s plus a t divided by s plus a with limit from 0 to infinity which if i would put i will get 1 divided by s plus a okay therefore therefore i can say that let me write the result that e the, the x of s just like we had here hmm, for this case for the second case if i am going to write i will get x of s is equal to 1 divided by s plus a but the roc the region of convergence is for real part of s what is the real part of s it is sigma so the real part of s is sigma for the real part of s going less than minus a whose roc if i am trying to draw then i will get a different kind of roc let me draw that roc now here the roc says that its value should come less than minus a so whatever is the value of minus a from that you have to take in the left direction up to minus infinity okay so this is how i will draw the roc of this particular case so let me draw that here i will put minus a this is sigma and j omega axis this is the s plane so look these two results this one as well as this one both of them are having x of s to be same which is 1 divided by s plus a but its roc is different its roc is different both of them have the answer as s plus a but its roc is different let me write that you know in a concise manner so now uh, when we look at the laplace inverse of this see 1 by s plus 1 can either come as e raised to power minus t u of t or it can come as minus e raised to power minus t u of minus t similarly s of minus 2 can come as e raised to power plus a t u of t or minus of e raised to power plus uh, 2t uh, yeah plus 2t u of minus t so both these are possible for each on each of these case so based on that h of t can have three options let me draw the three options the first possibility is that you are having such a uh, such an output h of t the laplace transform you have taken where it's both a right handed sequence okay it's both a right handed sequence this is also right handed sequence this is also right handed sequence but look at this right handed sequence this is basically going to decay down whereas this right handed sequence the second sequence is actually moving up so if 
if we are going to take both of these addition totally we can say that h of t is not going to be absolutely integrable so we can say that though this is right handed sequence these are right handed sequence these are right handed uh, sequence or signals plus they are unstable they are unstable at the same time they are causal why causal because it is only right handed side so instead of writing right handed i will write it's a causal as well as an unstable and this is how the roc will look like look at the roc the roc is not covering the j omega axis it's not covering the j omega axis let us look at another uh, possibility of h of t now for this case this is going to be a right handed sequence whereas this is going to be a left handed sequence combined if you would take then it is having both right handed as well as left handed so i will call this as a non causal system it's a non causal okay it is a non causal system similarly here at the right handed side if i am going to draw i will draw the right handed sequence like it is dk and similarly if i am going to draw e raised to power 2t e raised to power 2t is basically going up but since we are taking only the left hand sequence of that we are not bothered about what happens in the right uh, in the left hand side it is again dk so this is also dk this is also dk that means it is a stable system so if it is a stable system but it is a non causal in nature and if i draw the roc so if i am going to draw the pole diagram which is at minus 1 and 2 uh, and the zero is at 1 see for this case for this right handed sequence it will be a right handed roc that is what we have studied isn't it look here for a right handed sequence it is a right handed roc for a left handed sequence it's a left handed roc that is what we have seen this is a left handed sequence it has got a left handed roc so here if i am going to draw two rocs one for the right hand side one it will go towards right hand side and the left hand side one which is basically from for this equation which is from 2 it will go towards left hand side and both of them where they overlap that is going to be the roc so basically the roc will start from here and it will go all the way up to here it will not go beyond that because beyond that this is there but this is not there and beyond this this is not there but this is there so when we overlap the roc then only we will get the total roc so based on that if i am going to draw the roc the roc will basically look like this wherein now we can see that the j omega axis is getting in between this in between the roc so now roc is including the j omega axis and this is the case for the stable case similarly if you look for the third case now in this case both of them are left handed sequence both of them are left handed sequence so you are totally having a left handed sequence only so it is a non causal system okay so it is a non causal system that is no doubt about it that there is no doubt about it but what about the stability let us look e raised to power minus t if i am trying to draw the e raised to power minus t will come like this whereas e raised to power 2t when i draw i will draw it basically like this but i am only taking about the negative axis of it so if i am going to take the negative axis means i am talking about this one and this one well this is integrable whereas this is not integrable it is not integrable so in totality it is not integrable so it is integrable only for a particular roc so this is going to be an unstable case it is going to be an unstable case and now if i am trying to draw the roc of this i will have the poles one is at 2 another zero is at 1 whereas one pole is at minus 1 now if i am going to look at this one this is a left handed sequence so i have to draw from here the left one okay and if i have to draw for this one it is again a left handed sequence but i have to draw left hand from here from here to this side i have to draw now if in this case i am going to look both of them are overlapping only at this particular point at this particular point isn't it beyond that here both of them are not there here none of them are there so i will draw the 
ROC based on from minus 1 towards the left hand side. So the combined ROC will basically come like this. So from this you can see that now here the ROC is totally left hand sided but at the same time it is not including the J omega axis and what is it? It is unstable, isn't it? So in all these three cases if you would see the stability is being maintained only when the ROC is having the J omega axis and that is why we are having the statement that we did previously in the case of st stability we said that an LTI system is stable if and only if the ROC of its system function Laplace transform H of S includes the J omega axis. So looking at the ROC only you will be able to say if a function is stable or not. Thank you.